Man, the Lost Treasure event has made some major changes in the current meta for the Legends. Today we got an updated tier list and we're ranking them all from best to worst. Let's do it. Welcome back to the channel, Warriors. I'm Warlog, and if this is your first time here and you want to learn how to improve your gameplay, get more kills, and other Apex Legends related tips, then start now by clicking the subscribe button and hitting the bell so you guys don't miss out on anything. Quick disclaimer, guys, in my last Legends tier list video, I got a lot of hate of where I placed the Legend. Now, again, I want to emphasize that's why I used the criteria that I had, and ultimately, it's my opinion. So, if your Legend didn't rank high or rank super low, don't get really upset and jaded in the comments. You have to look at this thing from a realistic standpoint. These Legends are very tough to rank, and that's why we have a criteria. So, uh, if there's some way that you want to change my opinion on these Legends, then let me know down in the comments. All right, guys, how awesome was the Lost Treasures event? It was amazing, and what came with it was some major changes to a few of the Legends, but it completely shifted the meta. So today, I'm going to do an updated Legends tier list for Season 5. I didn't see many other changes to the Legends happening in Season 5, so this list should be good for the rest of the season. Okay, let's cut to the chase. Today, we're not going into an in-depth you know, take on every single Legend like we did in our previous tier list video, but I'm going to talk about the few changes... To the legends from the lost treasure event if you checked out my last video with the link is going to be above i use a certain criteria to help rank the legends and we're going to use the same thing today from that video all right let's talk about the legends that changed and what their tier is now that everything has been a huge update from the lost treasure event okay so last video there were these rankings and i gave all the legends and i still believe that most this is the most accurate list out there and in the most realistic list out there now let's look at my new list and see what changes happened. As you can see, Loba was the biggest drop from A tier to C tier. Although she's a fan favorite and the community loves her, she just hasn't had the impact so far in the season. She is really fun to play and has cool abilities, and with the update she got some quality of life improvements, but she still falls short compared to other legends, especially with the lifeline's huge buff. The other big change that came, and this is where I'm going to get some major hate guys, is Mirage falls to D tier. Every video that we do for a tier list, you know, a legend has to pull up the rear, and that happens to be Mirage, okay? His rework again was needed for him as an individual legend, but the update didn't help him, and he's still just a solo act in Apex. All the hype behind his rework was just that, hype. Now, the legends that jump spots and are really shaking up the meta, let's start from the bottom, and oh man, I'm telling you guys, Revenant is a season 5 game changer now. Moving from dead last in D tier and all the way to the A tier, the removal of range on his ultimate was a huge impact to the game, and his ultimate has been highly used in the current meta. Having two lives is just too hard to beat, guys. Next up is Lifeline. It might be the biggest improvement from the Lost Treasure event. Between the former buffs that Gibby got and Loba's Marketplace ultimate, Lifeline kind of fell back into the shadows and is still a good legend, but now she's really insane. Being able to revive and still fight, guys, is unheard of. Unheard of. And now she can still use her drone to heal, which is literally OP. She jumped from B tier back to A tier and much deserved so. Her care package has some needed items like more heals and attachments, making her a more suitable use in competitive play as she regains her crown as the ultimate support legend. Now, last but not least, guys, I have to talk about Race Rework. She has proved again to be the flagship legend for Apex. Her rework has made her even better, and if you don't think so, you're not a true Apex Legends player and understand the game. She is nuts right now. Yes, in a slower initial time to phase, but the 30% boosted speed, her portal, and being able to see every legend in the game is just insane. It makes her the best legend still. Five seasons in a row, she still re- gains that crown as the best legend in the game. Now onto the legends who got changes but didn't move in the tier list, and those legends are Crypto, Octane, and Watson. First guys, let's start with Octane. The buff he received was a good one with his tactical stim allowing him to no longer feel the movement and parrying effects, which is awesome. It allows him to move freely through Watson fences, eat arc stars like candy, and even go through Cossack's gas, so this was a plus. His ultimate jump pad now allows players to double jump, which is actually really cool and fun ability. But although the devs have said that they wanted to make Octane more of a team-oriented legend, these improvements just don't do that. 
Sure, the double jump is cool, but again, he's still almost a solo act just like Mirage. Let's talk about Crypto, guys. Man, last tier video, I got a lot of hate on him as well. His buffs to his tactical are noted, reducing the time it takes to go into his drone from 2.5 seconds to 1.5 seconds. This is a nice buff, nice buff, but crypto players are typically sitting behind cover using the drone and depending on the distance they are from a fight, that one second improvement still isn't inviolable when the game is so fast. Now, maybe if they added his ultimate stun to last a lot longer, it would help compensate for how long crypto is out of the fight. His ultimate is now being able to destroy Watson's ult, the pylon, is a minor improvement. I'd say if Crypto was a better legend and was used more in the meta, particularly competitive, it would have more of an impact, but overall, Crypto remains a low-level legend. On to Watson. Man, I love Watson, dude, especially in competitive. Her changes, you could say, are more of a rework than a buff or a nerf. Until then, she remained one of the most powerful legends used on almost every team at the highest level. Now, her pylons now only last 90 seconds as opposed to being permanent, but she can have three of them out at the same time, which is awesome, and she can double stack ultimate accelerants to help power these ultimates. The devs said they wanted to make her more balanced to be able to make teams be able to push Watson defended positions. But even with this change, good Watson players will still have her ranked very high, so she remains in the A tier. Okay, guys, that's going to do it for today's video, but let me know down in the comments what you think of the updated tier list and if there's any changes you would make. If you have any questions about today's video, I stream every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday on Twitch. The link is going to be down in the description below. And if you want more tips on how to improve your Apex Legends gameplay, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Click that little bell so you guys don't miss out on anything. And as always, guys, stay gaming. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.